the Gigabyte RX 6650 XT Eagle. This is the cheapest 6650 XT you can buy, at least in North America. But is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I test and review PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and video cards. Before I get into the overview, to have full disclosure, I did buy this video card myself, so all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone. Starting with a quick overview of this card, just so you understand, there are two Gigabyte RX 6650 XTs, the Gaming OC and this one, the Eagle. And yes, I agree, the Eagle is a very weird name for a video card. The specs of these cards are the same, aside from the rated boost and game clocks. The Gaming OC has a plus 59 megahertz on the boost clock and a plus 113 megahertz on the rated game clock. And yes, that is the rated, not the actual frequencies. More on that in a bit. Now, the more meaningful difference between these cards is that the Gaming OC does have a larger heatsink. I have also tested the RX 5600 XT and an RX 580. I tested these cards honestly because I don't actually have that many cards to compare the 6650 XT to, but all three of these cards do have a pretty similar power usage. If you do have any questions on how I test the cards, please check out my GPU testing methodology video. There'll be a card along the top, and I'll also have it linked down in the description. Okay, I'm just going to kind of throw the charts up and talk a bit as they go by. I did test all three cards at both 1080 and 1440p in all 10 games, or 11 I guess, since I do test Rainbow Six in both DirectX 11 and Vulkan. Now outside of CSGO at 1080p where there is a CPU bottleneck, the RX 6650 XT is typically 30 to 40% faster than the RX 5600 XT and is pretty much two to two and a half times faster than the RX 580 at both 1080p and 1440p. Now, it does depend on what type of games you play and what resolution and how many hertz your monitor is on if buying anything higher than an RX 580 makes any sense. Because besides Halo Infinite multiplayer, the RX 580 was able to put out a minimum of 60 FPS in all of these games at 1080p. However, if you are someone who has or is looking to buy a high refresh rate monitor or games at 1440p, getting something newer could make sense. But you also need to keep in mind you do need a CPU that can actually support high refresh rate gaming if you want to have a high refresh rate monitor. Taking a quick look at the cost per frame 1080p chart. Just a quick note, I am using used prices for the 5600 XT and 580. Now, since used prices have dropped so much in the past few weeks, the RX 5600 XT and the RX 580 do have a much better cost per frame than the 6650 XT does. Moving to the 1440 cost per frame chart, things are pretty much the exact same. Now, yes, the 6650 XT can put out a lot more frames than the 5600 XT or the 580, but they cost just so much less. Now, before I move on to the temperature testing charts, if you like what I'm doing here, then please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because it really does help a lot. Plus, if you appreciate all the testing I'm doing here, then please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. Doing so will help me make more videos like this one. A link is in the description. I'll be doing these charts a bit out of order. I'm going to start off with the power consumption chart because as I said earlier, all three of these cards use pretty much the same amount of power. So I would like to highlight the efficiency of the 6650 XT. As you can see, the 6650 XT is far more efficient than the 580 
and is a pretty nice step up over the 5600 XT at both 1080 and 1440p. Now for the GPU clocks, the reason I'm showing this card is because I want to show the frequency that I got on the Eagle card in my testing. It is higher than the specs indicate. Now if you recall, the stock game clock for this card was 2410, but I'm getting an average game clock of 2482. So 70 megahertz higher than the stock game clock. And yes, I am using air quotes when I say stock because that's kind of the point that I'm trying to get across here. Now there is a pretty good chance that the gaming OC card would also have a higher clock speed over the spec game clock. So how much this really matters, I'm not entirely sure, but my best guess would be plus one FPS type thing. Okay, moving on to the fans. The auto fan profile on this card is pretty much topping out at around 2400 RPM, with the average RPM in my testing being 2315. For the sound normalized temperature testing, the RPM of this fan was set to 2950. And for the max RPM temperature testing, the RPM of this fan was set to around 4610. Now for the temperature charts, Starting with the auto profile, the DBA maxed out at 35.5 and had an average edge temperature of 69 Celsius with the average memory temperature at 71 Celsius. Now the average hotspot temperature was 86.5 Celsius, but this is the average hotspot. The max hotspot temperature did hit 89.5 Celsius, which is getting up there. So in my opinion, the auto fan profile is probably not quite aggressive enough for this heatsink. Moving on to the sound normalized temperature testing. So with the fans at 40 dBA, the average edge temperature was 63 Celsius, with the average memory temperature being 65 Celsius, and the average hotspot temperature being 78 Celsius, which is much better than the auto fan profile. Then with the fans at max speed, the DBA was 56, which is loud, but that brute force did drop the average edge temperature to 56 Celsius, with the average memory temperature being 56 Celsius as well, and the average hotspot temperature was 70 Celsius. So yes, the temperatures are good, but 56 DBA is loud to say the least. So what do I think of the Gigabyte RX 6650 XT Eagle? Now the 6650 XT is a very capable video card for high refresh rate 1080p and 1440p gaming, but it really depends on how much you can find them for. With the Eagle being one of, if not the lowest price option at 285 USD. Now at that price, I do think that this is a pretty good deal. I think plus minus $300 makes sense for a 6650 XT, but there are 6650 XTs that are much more than that, upwards of 400 USD and even more, which is crazy that there is that much of a price gap or price fluctuation between the same version of video cards. Now for this specific video card, meaning the Eagle, it was pretty much what I expected it to be, thermally speaking. It's not really good at all, but it's also good enough, if that makes sense. It can definitely keep temperatures in check, but yes, you might need to have it a bit louder than you would want it to be. So if you are looking to upgrade your video card but you don't like buying used and your price range is in that 300 USD range, this is likely one of the best deals to get. Now if you do want to learn more about this 6650 XT Eagle, I will be doing a teardown along with some post teardown temperature testing in my next video. But that is all I have for this video. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel because it really does help out a lot. And don't forget to click that bell icon. There's also the HFG Discord server. It is completely free to join. All you need to do is agree to the server rules and then you can view all of my charts. A link is in the description. There's also Patreon if you wanna support the channel directly. A link is in the description. Uh, you may wanna check out these videos here. They might be along the same lines of what this video was about, maybe. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.